fluid coming to you from the kitchen this time. Uh, today we're going to make some uh, homemade bacon. In fact, uh, you call it buckboard bacon because we're not going to be using uh, belly meat on a on a pig. We're going to be using a uh, Boston Boston butt. Uh, I, this is my third time to do this, and I thought some of y'all might enjoy doing it. And on top of that, it's much cheaper uh, than store-bought bacon. So, at any rate, uh, it's well worth doing. What I'm going to be using to cure this bacon with is a pack that you get from High Mountain Seasoning. And you know, I could figure out, there's only three ingredients I think in it, and I could figure out the ratios if I take time, but uh, this kit is real convenient. Uh, it comes with uh, three packs in it. It's got, uh, like I said, it's got brown sugar in it, it's got salt, it's got the uh, Instacure in it. So uh, it's real convenient. This one bag is good for uh, six pounds of Boston butt and you'll end up with uh, you know that much bacon so that's what we're going to use today and like I said I'll show you all the finished product I've got a pack uh, of it comes out when you slice it up looking you know just like bacon except for one thing you'll notice it's a lot leaner probably better for you, but I can tell you, it tastes every bit as good as store-bought bacon, and you can do this and make bacon for probably about a third of the cost. So, at any rate, to me, it seems like uh, it's worth doing. You know, it is a little bit of trouble. I have to uh, put, the, put the cure on and everything, then I've got to put it in a vacuum uh, bag. Uh, you don't have to, you can put it in a Ziploc or whatever kind of container you want and let it sit in the refrigerator uh, for at least 10 days. I usually let mine go two weeks. Uh, it sits down there and uh, about a weekend I will turn it um, so that you know the salt uh, has a better chance of getting more uh, evenly distributed, the cure rather, uh, part of it's salt. But uh, then you know after after that then it'll go on uh, my smoker, and I'm going to show you that. We'll have to wait two weeks, and uh, and get to that. We'll um, we'll show you the rest of the process. Okay, so all you do is cut open this little premixed bag of of cure. Like I say, it's already mixed up in the right proportions and everything. Now, I didn't show you closely uh, a minute ago the kit. It's got instructions in it too, so you can't go wrong. But anyway, here's the, here's the kit right there from High Mountain Seasonings. And again, I'm not a salesman for High Mountain Seasonings at all, um, but it's a product that's pretty good. They make pretty good jerky stuff too. And uh, it's convenient, and so uh, I like using it. So all I'm gonna do is pour this over this Boston butt and I'm gonna rub it in now. This is a boneless uh, Boston butt if you can't get a boneless one um, Off the shelf In the supermarket you can uh, ask the butcher to cut the cut the bone out um, I think it's uh, probably important uh, At least the recipes say to use a, a boneless a bonus butt so might as well go by the directions and make sure it comes out right uh, every batch I've made so far uh, my me and my family have really uh, enjoyed this bacon it makes a great BLT or breakfast bacon whatever you want to do with it it's it's uh, turns out just fine so anyway let me get this put on here, and then we'll come back and we'll vacuum seal it. And you rub it, you know, rub it in good. Rub it into any crevices. You want that uh, 
cure has to travel all the way to the center of this piece of meat. So it's important that you get it uh, completely, uh, completely covered. Anyway, be back in a minute. All right, I sealed the bottom of my vacuum seal bag. Um, I'll show you my vacuum sealer in a minute. I think the vacuum sealer is probably one of the most important pieces of equipment that a, that a sportsman can have because you really save a lot of meat and so forth if, uh, if you use one. Uh, you can leave deer meat or anything in the freezer for a year and get it out. Uh, and uh, it still tastes just as good as when uh, you put it up. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in vacuum sealers. So we got her in there, and I'll turn this around and we'll look at the All right, so we got the, got the bud in the, in the bag, and so let's uh, just vacuum seal it up, and then we'll just go down and put it in the refrigerator. I'll mark the date on it with a Sharpie. That's all it is to it. We've got uh, Got it sealed up. I believe a vacuum sealer probably does better than putting it in a Ziploc or some other kind of uh, container um, because it, you know, it seals it up and uh, forces uh, those ingredients to surround uh, uh, the Boston butt that we're making into bacon and, and uh, um, you probably get uh, penetration into the meat a little bit better. I don't know that to be true, but I believe it to be true. Anyhow, so next we'll we'll just put a date on it and we'll take it down to the refrigerator. All right, so I'm just gonna slip this into the refrigerator and uh, we will check on check on it in a week, turn it over. Uh, we have an extra refrigerator downstairs, so uh, it's real handy to do this kind of stuff. Anyway, check back with you in a week. All right, folks, it has been about a week since I. Uh, uh, vacuum seal that bacon and put it in the fridge so I'm simply gonna uh, simply gonna flip it over and um, it'll sit for another week and then we'll um, we'll get it out and smoke it hootie hoot all right folks it's been two weeks I've just taken our um, well five six pound butt out of the uh, refrigerator it's been curing for two weeks and so now it's time to get it ready for the smoker what you have to do first is of course uh, rinse it off to get uh, the remaining salt solution and whatnot out of it uh, and then uh, you let it soak for an hour and um, take it out rinse it out and then let it soak for another hour in, in fresh water so that's what we're going to do hang on okay so i've uh, rinsed off the piece of meat and i have put it in a bucket a clean bucket and uh you want to make sure it's fully submerged. I'm going to let this go for an hour soaking, and then I'll pour this water off, and then I'll re-soak it again for another hour. And then after that, uh, we got one more step before we can put it on the smoker, and uh, I'll let you know, uh, or I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Okay, folks, uh, this thing has been soaking for two hours, two separate uh, hour-long water baths, cool water, clean water, um, an hour apiece. So what I'm going to do now is pull it out. I am going to pat it dry with some 
with some paper towels. And then I'm gonna put it on this, this is called a Bradley rack. You can use any kind of wire rack. Uh, I think it's made for Bradley smokers. I don't have a Bradley smoker, but uh, the rack is uh, handy. And for this purpose, turning it upside down to where the meat will be on top of here, up off of, uh, up off of the surface, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and allow air circulation down uh, underneath. I guess it would circulate the other way, but uh, I think this is probably better. So, just pull it out of the water bath. Pat it down, get it dry, pretty dry. And the reason why we're going to put it in the refrigerator and it calls, the recipe calls for putting it in there for an hour, but I don't have time to smoke it this evening because right after uh, it goes through this process, we're going to put it in the smoker. So I'm going to leave it overnight. And the reason you do this is uh, for the bacon to form a, what's called a pellicle on the outside. Just sort of a, uh, it'll look almost kind of a little glazed, I guess. And when you put it in the smoke, uh, it will retain some of the moisture inside and so forth. So um, that's all it is to it. Uh, I'm not going to show it down here in the, uh, taking it down to the refrigerator. Simply go down and set it in the fridge. And then tomorrow I will uh, smoke it. And uh, so, see y'all then. All right, folks, this bacon has been sitting in the fridge for, since last night, I'm on my lunch hour. So I've got to get this going pretty quick. You see, it's uh, looking pretty good. I'm gonna get it out here going on the smoker. Got folks finally working on my dock out there. Uh, I've shown y'all on some other videos uh, what Hurricane Sally did to my dock. So we finally got a dock crew here and they're going to get it all fixed up. Anyway, back to the bacon. Uh, I have a smoking Tex smoker and uh, it does real well. I used to have a great big smoker that you had to, you know, made out, made out of oil fill pipe and all that. But uh, you had to stay with it and keep feeding it food and so uh, uh feeding it wood rather and uh so um it's just a lot easier to do uh do some of the things i do on a, a electric smoker you can just walk off from it especially a guy who's still got a job and so forth so anyway the directions call for you putting it on uh 150 for an hour and then come back and put some wood in for the um to generate the smoke so I've already turned it on to 150 and uh, so I'm going to slip this in there and um, put the temperature probe in which I've got a, um, a probe to read the temperature. Our final temperature we're going to want it to be 140 at the center so I'm just going to insert that in there and uh, close her up in a moment uh let me see if i can get this um uh, remember how to turn this thing on there we go uh i just took the meat out of the refrigerator so it is 37 degrees in the center so uh we're gonna let this run for um an hour at 150 and then we'll come back and we'll jack the temperature up to probably 180 because I'm going to be gone all afternoon and I don't want to get it uh, uh, the temperature too high internally. Uh, uh, our target is 140. So uh, it ought not get over that uh, by the time I get home this afternoon from work. Anyway, let's go over here and uh, I'm going to 
bust a little bit of wood for for it. This is cherry that I'm using. I, I got a supply of it and stuff I've cooked with uh, cherry wood has always turned out pretty good. That doesn't look like much wood, but uh, that'll be more than enough to uh, smoke this bacon off. So I'll be back out here in an hour to get the smoke rolling. Check y'all then. All right, folks, it's been about an hour since I put this thing on at uh, 150 degrees. The internal temperature has come up to 61. I got to get back to work, so. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing up to um, 180. Don't want it to get above 140 before I get home from work this afternoon. I'm also going to go ahead and load the wood box. We'll load that in there and we will get our smoke going and uh, we should have smoked bacon when I get home from work this afternoon so uh, anyway I'll check with y'all then all right folks we got home from work and uh, as you can see the uh, temperature got a little bit higher than I wanted internally it's 154 but uh no big deal we're going to turn it off and unplug the smoker and we're going to take it out it's not that much over 140 and you can see that let me pull the temperature probe out Turn it off. And we got a pretty piece of bacon. Stick it in the uh, stick it in the refrigerator, let it cool down, and then I'll slice it into uh, however many chunks I want and freeze it and i'm telling you it's as good as any bacon you've ever had so anyway y'all make some it's uh it's good stuff and uh we'll catch you next time y'all keep it between the ditches because we can't do it without you hooty hoot <music>